up, what's up, my people? Yes, yes, yes. Back in the building. What's up, y'all? It is Monday, March 18th. And I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Him, all things is possible. This No Ducks on episode is sponsored by Bow, Follow Match Bow, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Match the best sponsorship in the land. How's everybody doing, man? Uh, Felt like I missed y'all, felt like, I, but I was just here Friday, so it is. I hope everybody's doing good, and I hope everybody's ready. Um, y'all know me. I told you I was going to get back to doing what I do best, and, uh, you know, I love boxing, uh, amateur and pro, but y'all know my, y'all know my lingo, y'all know me, y'all, y'all know the direction I'm going. You know, I love my amateurs, you know, I always call them amateur stars because that's what they are and the amateur star we got tonight is somebody that y'all are uh, familiar with uh i had him on uh claims promotion the first time then i had him on instagram on old doug zone now i got him officially on youtube again um he's not only one of the dopest fighters um in the u.s but in newark i mean you name it this dude is fought everywhere places that you can't even pronounce so without further ado, we bring him in, my brother Keith Coleman. All right, give me, give me, give me a second. Uh, make sure I'm doing this right. Up uh, there we go. What's going on? There we go. Keith, man, what's up, my guy? What's going on, my guy? Yo, man, I ain't see you, but I ain't see you in a hundred years, Keith. What's up, man? Everything what's good. Cool? What's going on, man? What's going on? How, how's everything? Every, everything good. Still the same thing. Working hard. Staying focused. Yeah, I believe we talked, um, correct me, was it about a year ago? Yeah, probably so. It was about a year ago, right? And um, that's it's, it, it had been a while, but I've been keeping up with you, you know, as far as talking to your pops and seeing things that you had going on, man. I said, you're still out here uh, kicking ass as usual, man. So, uh, yeah. so, so since the last time we talked, um, bring me up to date. What's been going on with you? I mean, it's been a while, but... I mean, I was just talk about now. You feel me? Um, so right now I'm in a I'm in a uh, state tournament. I'm in the Golden Gloves. I just won yesterday. I got the um, split decision, but it was four one. I got a um, decision over an opponent. Um, so I go again next week. Well, this this upcoming Saturday I go again. So that's the final. So yeah, after that. Um, you no, know, we just staying focused, same motto, keep getting better, staying sharp, and just preparing for the next big thing. Yeah, that's in um that's uh in Bloom Bloomfield this mm-hmm. week. Right, uh right. True War True 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 Warriors Boxing Gym, I believe whatever the, is that what they're no, doing that's today? Where we just fought at. That's where we just That's where you just fought at. So yeah, that won't be that won't be that won't be this week. I think no, no, no. That won't be this week, nah. Okay. This this week is uh Bloomfield High School. Oh, that's what it was, Bloomfield High School. Yeah, yeah. I told your father too. I said, "Yo, you're killing me," because I said it's funny because the same day that you're fighting is the same day they're doing the show in John Jim in the Bronx, and I'm like, "Yo, you really gonna really make me sit here and really pick <laughs> between the two? And I'm like, "Damn, I can't." I can't do both shows in one day, so I'm like, yeah, I might have to, might have to miss the John's gym because I never got to see you fight, and that was the one thing that I regret um, is seeing you. And I'm like, well, he's only across the bridge, man, so you know, hey. it's not hard to get over there. But we're gonna try to, uh, we're gonna try to make it. So, um, talk to me about the fight you just uh, had. How did, I mean, how did that go? How were you feeling going into the fight? Oh, I mean, um, I felt, you know, I felt great. You know, every. You know, everybody got complications throughout the training camp, whether that would probably be like a little injury or this or that. But um, overall, I felt great. I felt confident mentally. I felt like, you know, I knew I was going to win. You know, like that's that's a fighter's yeah. mindset, you know, not even thinking about, you know, losing. So going into the fight, my my mindset, it was good. Um, my headspace was in the right place. And, you know, I had a great training camp. So... You know, like I knew everything. Everything's been clicking, so I was confident. My work, confident in what I was going to do in the ring, and um, that's exactly what I did. Anything like during the fight, whatever I wanted to do, I did it. 
but they were boxing, banging. You know, it was a good fight, though. Um, I believe if it was the fight of the night, uh, the fight of the night, that would have been about because, you know, we opened the door strong, like action-packed fight. It wasn't a burn to fight at all. We had, you know, everybody on their toes. Not saying that we was out there banging because I wasn't, you know. Um, yeah. Still still kept the same recipe hit, not get hit. But um, it was a good fight, right? Really exciting fight. And I enjoyed it. Yeah. What what helps you to go in so confident, though? As I, I've noticed that since me and you've been talking, and I'm like, yo, he's super confident. What is it? Is that something that's always been in you? Or did that just happen when you started boxing? It, it's just, you know, when you train so hard and you sparring and sparring and your training is showing in the sparring, you just, you, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, that's your confidence right there. When you work hard, that's your confidence. When you don't cut corners, that's your confidence. When you do everything right, that's your confidence. So I feel as though because I don't cut corners and I work hard and I'm a student of the game, Going into the fight, the only th I don't feel much nervousness. It's really just anxiousness, anxious to go out there, anxious to put on a good show. I'm just anxious. I just want to hurry up and like, I don't like waiting, you know. So I, that's really my feelings before the fight. Is I just be anxious, not 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 so nervous, just anxious to put on a show, anxious to, you know, show what I've been to show what I've been training and doing with inspiring and training in the fight. Have you ever had a moment um, where, you know, you've seen the crowd and you might have said, damn, you know, I've, I've fought in front of a lot of people before, but this is the most people I've ever fought in front of. Like, have you ever had that moment where you're like, damn, it might have just got to you a little bit or you just overlooked it and said, you know what, it doesn't matter if it's 400 people or a thousand. I still got a job to go out there and do. I feel as though the more important the fight is or, I mean, each fight now is just, I feel as though it's important or bigger than the last you know, mm -hmm. whether it's like my reputation is on the line or you get what I'm trying to say? I feel yeah. as though each fight is, is, is more important than the last fight. So um, whether it's 100 people there or 10 people there or 400 people there, I feel as though since it's, my, since it's more important than my last, I'm going to always be locked in. And when I'm locked in, it's like that type of stuff don't phase me. You know what I'm saying? And if it is more people there, I'm gonna be super locked in because, you know, I'm ready to put on a show. Like that's all. Like the the bigger the more the more pressure there is, the more locked in I'm gonna be. I'm not one of those yeah. people that see everybody be like, oh, nah. If it's more people, you are gonna see it in my eyes that like, oh yeah, nah, he ready. Yeah, uh, cause I always like to ask guys that because I've been sit. I always sit at these fights and I see. The reaction of guys before they even get in the ring and as they making their way to the ring they whole face expression change like for that whole week they turned up for some reason when it's time to walk to the ring the energy is different and then i go yo after the fight i go you you good yo man i don't know man i was just nervous man you know i had my moms out there i had a lot of people coming to see me that i didn't know that was coming to see me and that kind of interfered with the way i perform and i'm like well, you can't allow you can't allow that to happen because then that means every time it's time for you to perform, that that would interfere with you. You can't. You gotta let yeah. all that shit go. Yeah, no nah, facts. But for like for me this weekend, you know, we we was in a we was in a, a gym, you know, so it's not that big. So the yeah. ring, the ring, and where people sit at is right there. You know, the only thing that's separating the ring and the seats is the judges. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's real close. So. You know, we got people from every gym. You got, you know, people talking throughout the week. Oh, you know, this kid going to beat this kid. And, then, you know, the little gossip, boxing, boxing gossip. So it's just like at that point in time, when I step into the ring, my family there too. And people yeah. came out to see me. But at that point in time, what's more important is getting down to business and showing out and winning. You know, me thinking about who's here, who's watching me. Like, that's the only across my mind. The only thing that crossed my mind is me winning. Like, I'm thinking about every scenario, like, every which way this fight could play out. That's that's what I'm thinking about. That's where my head at. When you're preparing for these big uh, fights um, or these shows or whatever you want to call it, tournaments, bell shows, whatever, um, how, how is training for you? 
leading up to it? Like, how, how do you feel? Do you feel the same way every time you train, or is the do you have a different feeling going into training every time? What? Um, I feel as though this training camp. So during training camp, you got you know sometimes my coaches say, um, you know, I don't want my fighter to peak soon, meaning he might you know, peaking peaking in boxing kind of mean like being super sharp. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, oh, I don't want him to peak so soon because you know, you, you know, as you go to a peak, you also got to come down. You get what yeah. I'm trying to say? So it's like if you peak soon, then when the fight comes, you're gonna be down. You're not gonna be as sharp as you was. So they'll kind of pull back on the fighter so he don't peak too soon. But for yeah. this training camp, me and my, I was telling my coach, I was just like, oh, coach, I feel like I just keep peaking. Like I just keep peaking. I keep peaking. Like it's. I just keep getting better. I keep getting sharper. I keep getting faster, smarter. Like, I'm just clicking. And, you know, everything was just working. So, like, this training camp, that's just how I felt. I felt like I was super sharp. And I've been getting better, 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 better. So, <clears throat> going into this training camp, I feel great. Go well, going into the fight, I feel great. And um, that's, that's the reason why I was confident. And I ain't even, you know, I... My, I was I was sharp mentally, so I knew yeah. how it was gonna play out. There's ever times you sit back and you you study your fights, or you just watch yourself, and you just you just like, damn boy, I'm a bad I'm a bad boy. Like you ever look at your work and be amazed with it, and not like not it's not cocky because there's nothing wrong with being proud of your work. But you know when you have a moment, you ever sit back and just watch what you do and be like, yo, yeah, I'm a dope, I'm a dope fighter. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I I I really do because. Me when I'm sparring, I don't really record. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you know the the sparring that we do have, we need it. So we record. Yeah. You know, like they probably gonna fill away. So we just don't even record. You know, we just say that across all the book. Nobody record. No matter if yeah. you're with us or you're not with us, nobody record. So the chances that I do get to record or somebody else to be recording, you know, we be like, all right. Like, I, I want to see the footage so I can see what I've been doing, what I was doing. And when I see, or oh, even when I fight, I just be like, dang, you know, like, that was sharp. But then in the back of my head, it's like, I done did so much, like, crazier things in the ring that just haven't even been, like, video and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, that, that's just how I be feeling. I be feeling like, dang, I was sharp. But then again, it's like, it's so much stuff I did that just was never caught on camera. I think, I think, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong. I think there's two type of fighters in this world. You got guys who, you know, can beat the, the hell out of you in sparring, and then you got guys when it's a real fight, they don't keep that same energy. Like I know you've seen guys spar, and you'd be like, you know, yeah, he bad. He, you know, the the boy can. Then when, it, when it's time to perform, he don't have that same energy. Like, right. and what do you, in your own words, what do you, what do you, what do you think that, what do you think that is with dudes? Um, well, I just feel as though you got some people that they only go when they comfortable, you know, that's, that's just that, you know, they only, they fight to their comfortability. If they comfortable with you, they going to show out, you know, if they not comfortable with you, then they going to fight, you know, at that level. So meaning if you have a kid that been in gym, but he only he only fight people in his gym. As soon as he take a step outside of his gym and spar or fight, no matter who it is at what level that other person is at, he's not gonna look as sharp. He's not gonna look as good, you know. So it really just gotta do with comfortability. But they call those gym fighters, you know. That's what they call them, gym fighters. Yeah, because we got to a point now where guys are walking around being undefeated. And I go, where, where, where did we start doing that? <laughs> when did we start bragging about defeated and sparring? But when it's time to yeah. perform, when it, when the lights is on, I'm keeping that same energy. So it it, yeah. just, it just don't make no sense to me. Oh, you you got guys that been in gym for five years and don't even have, have haven't even have more than five fights. Like, how's you still yeah. novice and you been in gym for five years? <laughs> I don't understand it. I, I think a lot of people, in my opinion, get involved in boxing just to say they're involved in boxing, because that's All the right. that's, that's 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 the thing now. 
and it's oh it's it's okay it depends on what direction you're going if you're like right. me and you're being a content creator that's cool even with being a content creator there's some things you still gonna have to know but when you talk about getting in there doing it with a man that's been doing it since they were five six years old or whatever and now here it is they're 19 or they're 20 years old or or 25 years old you you might want to think twice because eventually that person is not doing it just to do it you know eventually this is going to feed their family and here you are coming in there making a mockery of what i'm doing i'm in this gym five days a week probably in there right, for three exactly. four hours you coming in here just punching the bag three or four times looking stupid and you, you're not going to make a mockery of me so uh, i i see that a lot in these gyms exactly. but what do you like what's your message for cats that that that's coming in trying to make a mockery of the sport I mean, I just feel as though, you know, like, I mean, those people, they're going, they're going, they've been here, they're still here today, and they're going to always be here. You get what I'm trying to say? Whether, yeah, it, that's just, that's just how life go. You know, those type of people, you just can't get away from. It's just, that, that's just yeah. how they are. But, I mean, it's just like, you know, those who I do, you know, it's your world, you feel me? But just know. Yeah. That you know, if you're in a gym and you trying to be funny and somebody, you know, you just even make a slick remark like, oh, they ain't no working here for me. And it's a real dog and they go like, yo, stripe up. Now, now what's up? You know, you either go and tuck your tail or get in the ring and get put out. You feel me? So yeah. it's yeah. just like yeah. just stay in your lane, yeah. whatever you want to do. If you just want to do it for self-defense, all right, cool, stay in your lane. Yeah. You just wanna, stay. If you just want to do it just to train or lose weight, condition, better yourself, cool, stay in your lane. If you want to be a fighter and take it serious, cool, stay in your lane. If you want to be a celebrity yeah. boxer, cool, stay in your lane and just fight yeah. celebrity boxers. But when you start to, like, lane switch and do all this other extra stuff, that's when it started to become a problem. That's when people yeah. start to get hurt. Yeah, and, and and I hate to see it happen. And like you said, it's something that's it seems like it's not going anywhere. But when I see it, I go... You playing a dangerous game because like i said yeah. you're playing with cats that really do this and yeah. you could die you could die we've had people have died from this sport so it's like when you coming in and trying to play like this ain't no game homeboy stay in your lane because you know what i'm saying somebody like you uh and, and, and other guys other amateurs out here that that crack like they pros like you can get hurt playing this so the, the best advice is to stay in your lane don't come in boxing trying to nice. play it. Right. It's not gonna work out for you. But with with that being uh so with that being said, uh so um so we got this we got this week coming up. Um you know anything about your opponent or that don't even matter to you? I mean I know things about him, but like I said, you know like that's that's just extra. That's extra. The only thing that, that I'm really worried about is, you know, me, how I'm feeling. You know, it yeah. start with me first, you know. Yes. Um, once I'm clicking, what I know about my opponent, that's just extra. That's just, you know, that's just extra icing on the cake for me. But, um, yeah, I do know him. I actually fought him before, but like, that stuff don't really matter. You know, people get better. People change. People, you know, they come with a different mindset. So I'm not expecting the same fighter. I'm expecting a much um, hungrier fighter to come. And it's gonna be the same results, just worse this time. How do you? I mean, I know this is something that can't be avoided, but it happens a lot. And I, I guess people can say no if they're not interested. Um, how do you feel about sometimes guys fighting, you know, the same opponents four or six times in the amateurs, like you had Ryan and Devin doing? Yeah. Here it is, they're about to fight as pros. I mean, I know some guys that say that, yo, man, I don't want to fight this dude again, not because he beat me or I beat him. It's just that, man, I don't want to keep seeing this guy. I'm sick of it. You know what I mean? Eventually, me and him will see each other in the pros. Have you had that uh, have, have you had that happen to you? Um, No. The only time I fought some, a person more than once, it was like a rematch. Like I, I lost, and then I rematched them. So... And everybody that I rematch, I actually beat. Understand? So this is my only time that I, you know, I never fought the same person more than twice. Never. So it's not like Devin Haney and Ryan, they fought each other six times a piece. That's crazy. But would it, you it beat happen. would you beat with them 
Yeah, with them beating you and you getting your get back, um, was it something that you saw in them that you were able to expose it and you didn't get it the first time? And you were like, you know what? I got you now. Now I see what your weakness is or I see what I could expose. I'm going to be honest. Every time that I lost, it was either like, and it's just in general, with people that I lost and I haven't fought or haven't got a chance to rematch or any time I lost, it was me jumping out the gate early. You know, like like I said, I'm, I'm at an early, since my first fight, I never fought novice. So when I had zero fights, I fought somebody with 17 fights. When I had two fights, I fought somebody with 22 fights. So since the mm -hmm. gate, I was always like, you know, jumping out the gate. You get what I'm trying to say? Since early in my amateur career, I was always jumping out the gate. So a lot of the times I did lose, but it was more so because I was taking a risk, meaning, you know, all right, cool. We drove all the way down to Philly. This guy is seven pounds heavier and he's a, and he got more fights than you, but try the same mm -hmm. age. Do you want to take it? Yeah, we'll take that. You get what I'm saying? So it was like those types of fights where it's like we kind of came far. We need fights. He weighed more. He's old. You get what I'm trying to say? So yeah. anytime that I did lose, it wasn't because of my ability of boxing. It was more so the extra stuff. Like he was just bigger or he had more experience. He was older. But like I said, anytime I did rematch somebody, I always won. It was only... One time that I didn't win, and that was, that's when I was younger. You get what I'm saying? That's when I was younger. Like now, like, you know, it would be totally different. Yeah. With you fighting guys heavy like that, um, seven pounds or let's say if they were two inches, two, three inches taller than you, um, was it the same way when you sparred? Did you always get guys heavier than you to, you know, just to move around with them? Was it always like that? I mean, now, now it's like, you know, finding somebody my weight is soup. Like somebody finding somebody my weight and my skill level is super mm -hmm. hard. You understand what I'm saying? I, I either gotta, I either gotta spar somebody heavier. You know, bigger. Yeah. Like it, it's very rare that it's very rare that I find somebody my weight at the same skill level as me. It's very rare. All of my sparring usually be heavier, or they or they might be smaller, and I have to literally hold back. You know, so it's just like I gotta use them for like you know, use them for like little things or like all right, cool. This person got a good jab. Right, let me use it. Let me just practice just certain things. You get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I'm never trying to take it. And at the end of the day, it's sparring and I need sparring. So what would I get out of trying to stop one of my sparring partners in two rounds? Like yeah. Especially when I need sparring. I, you know what? It's funny that you said that about partnering somebody at your weight. And I was like, you know, to even when it comes to sparring, and I'm like, when I sit and I think about it and I go, that's crazy that because that shouldn't even be not saying not saying you and not saying pops, but when you think about it, it's like, yo, that shouldn't even be an issue because if you think about how many fighters there is per weight class, and you like, yo, come on, man, it's like a million trillion fighters, and you telling me I can't get somebody to come see me, or or people just might have heard about me and they shy away, like, nah, because I'm not gonna lie, I've been some places where people are like, yeah, I heard of Keith, and the reaction is not bad, but they like, nah, you know, yeah. I, I can't get my guy to get in there with him because that's it's, it's too much of it's too much of a risk. And I'm like, hey, bro, it's sparring. Nah, it's a risk. I'm 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 good. And I'm like, damn, keep like keep, keep got yeah. people on the bikes. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I mean, it, and it's like you know, even even mm -hmm. all right. So like, even with the good sparring that I get with people my week, it's like it'd be good sparring, but I would like I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything, but. With my mm -hmm. IQ, I land a big shot, boom. And then when I go yeah. to jump on them, you know, they're like, oh, like my corner, my corner, my corner be telling me, don't even throw. You get what I'm trying to say? It's like, because we need that work. If you go out there and you kill them, then it's like, now we ain't got no more work, you know? But um, yeah. 
truthfully, it's like, and I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it's some people that we don't we don't spar. It's like they're yeah. nice for work, but we be like, no, nah, we don't want to spar. Why? It's because you gotta understand once you get to a certain point, me sparring other people will help them get better. You get what I'm trying to say? They yeah. start they start seeing like the little things that I do. They like, oh, then he do this. Oh, all right, let me start doing that. You know, they start piggyback off of the things that I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. It is really a dog he dog wear and it's boxing. So you gotta stay within your own, but you don't wanna, you know, if you're not a part of my team, then no, nah, go ahead. You find your own spot. We don't, you know, we gonna yeah. find our work. You find y'all, y'all find y'all work. If y'all want work, we got fights. You feel me? That's 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 the only work y'all can get is fights. Yeah, yeah. It's but it, it yo, it's just it's just crazy though, cause I'm like, yo, it's so many fighters put weight class. And I'm like, yo, nobody shouldn't have no issue with nothing. And yeah. I was talking to another fighter about that, and he was like, he couldn't get a fight, and he was like, yo, man, I've been in boxing. For some years and he was like yo it's so hard for me to get a fight and man, i probably did more i don't mean i don't mean to cut you off though a lot of Fire. fighters say it's a lot of fighters say it's hard to get fights but they don't like to travel you can't be a great fighter especially starting amateur and you're not traveling meaning i'm from jersey i travel all over the u.s boxing sparring I go all the way to Connecticut, go all the way down to DC. Yeah. I take trips to Florida. I done taking trips to Vegas for training and sparring. I done took trips to Houston for training and sparring. Like all over the world. You get what I'm saying? So as a fighter, if you just staying in one spot and you complaining about your sparring, it's because you stationary. You know, you gotta separate yeah. yourself to elevate. I, I think a lot of fighters is like that, even in amateur, you know, and then it's like you'll have a coach say, we don't need to go down there for that. We don't need to go over there for that. You know, we, uh, we're we good right here. And I'm like, listen, it's cool if you're just known in your city. It's cool. But the thing is to get known worldwide. Like, I, like you know what I'm saying? You're not just known in Jersey. Like, your name uh, ring bells. And yeah, that's the right. good thing because – that means when you go to another state, whoever you're fighting, they don't necessarily have to be from that state. They might come from somewhere else. But let's say if they are from Florida, you might have some fans down there that you don't even know. So now you're putting asses in seats because now it's like, yo, we're we here to see Keith. You know what I'm saying? And, right. and even though amateurs are not getting paid, but it don't matter. Just to put asses in seats and people saying... I'm coming to see Keith and you're not even in your home state. That makes that, that, that's a big difference. So for anybody who's just like, yo, I don't have to leave New York. I ain't got to leave Jersey. I ain't got to leave Philly. You're bugging. You got to leave. Those, those, are, those are the same fighters that don't go to nationals and only go to one day shows. Those be the same fighters. They yeah. wonder why everybody else surpassed them and why everybody else is getting better and they not. Yeah. Yeah, then they'll go, you know what? I'm tired of fighting the same fighter. Well, you're not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see, homie. If you if he ain't going nowhere, you ain't going nowhere. Guess what? Y'all going to keep seeing each other regardless. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to you gotta move around, and that's more important. Um, what are some of the places you uh, haven't been to that you would like to uh, go to? Because I think you told me you fought in, if I'm not mistaken, you fought in Puerto Rico before. Right, yeah, I fought that plenty of times. What was that? What 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 was that? You know, what what was that experience like? You know, being in uh Puerto Rico. Um, well, I'm Puerto Rican, so you know, it's just it's always love. Every time I go to Puerto Rico, it's always love. But um, the experience is different from fighting out here. You know. They people really go out there, show support. Like when you fight, it's like a band coming out. You, you fighting and people playing drums, playing music in the crowd. Every time you land a shot, you'll hear somebody like blow a horn or like beat in the seats. You get what I'm saying? So it's like it's a different type of atmosphere out there. They actually have like little small stadiums that yeah. with, a, with a boxing ring in the middle. And it's just like seats all around. It's, just for boxing, you understand what I'm saying? So um, they take boxing serious out there. And it's, it's, it's fun.
fine. You know, when you out there, it's just fine. Yeah, um, because I'm 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 trying to wonder. Well, not wonder, but when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, it's cool to fight in the U.S. It's cool to go different places. But when you start talking about going to different countries, um, that's a big deal. Um, is there anywhere that you would like to go that you haven't been yet? If you get a chance um, to go, uh, I feel as though I think you use bet. Hold on, okay, hold on. My fault, my fault. Um, no, you good, you good, you good, you good. I feel as though I, I like, I like Uzbekistan. Those fighters, they mad durable and they, they work crazy hard. I want to go out there and have like a training camp, hopefully, one time. Um, where else? Um, I'd love to have a training camp in Puerto Rico. You know, like a, mm. like a professional, professional training camp. But uh, everywhere else, it like I don't really care for. I like I like being in my own space. You know. Yeah. I I, I had training camps in Vegas and this place and that place, and they kind of like it. Kind of like I don't know. I just I just be feeling like, damn, I want to go home. Like it's boring. You get what I'm trying to say? I'm a fighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, I, like when it's time to lock in, I'm a lock in. But when it's yeah. really, like you know, yeah. after a while, you, you know, you ever had a vacation? It's like, alright, I'm ready to go home now. That's yeah, what I'm like, plenty of times. Yeah, plenty kinda of times. What, kind of what it's like. So going going to these different countries, um, and you know, for the age you are, for somebody who's younger, and somebody who's older that has never been to these type of places, um. What does that do for you? Do you ever just be glad to get back home and somebody might ask you, yo, Keith, yo, what is it like in Puerto Rico? What is it like here? What is it like in Ohio? Or what is it like in Texas? Or, you know, like, because I'm sure they ask those type of questions. A lot of people, you know, they just want to know. I mean, right. do you do you have fun sharing those moments with them or you just go, you know, it's all right. It's all right out there. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, once you go, like, once once it become, like, a repetitive thing, you know, like, yeah. I've been to a lot of different countries, I've been to a lot of different states boxing, so it's, you know, like, it, you know, it, it's, it's hard to explain, but when you do something yeah. over and over, yeah, once you do something over and over again, it's just, you, not that you get the same experience, but... You know, it's like you kind of give yeah. them the same answer in a way. Yeah. But um, for the most part, um, especially visiting other countries, I I just really be grateful because, you know, you just appreciate more what you have and you see that, you know, you see how they live versus how you live back at home. You see what yeah. they got versus what you got. It's like a lot of little stuff like that. You know, you, you just appreciate it more. You know, so I feel as though. Like visiting other countries and seeing how they live and seeing like you know the come up and just hear, hearing stories you know because when you out there competing you you with people from other countries like people from Mexico, uh, China, all these other places and you hear the sacrifices that they make just so they could get there you like wow that's crazy you know so yeah it is that's that's it's like I said more grateful. yeah you experiencing this. You know, and coming coming from where you're coming from, that's a big deal. Because there's a lot of people I'm sure that's either not gonna make it out of there or they didn't make it out of there. You know what I'm saying? So for you to be a kid from Newark and you getting ready, I mean you're going to every place that you probably been in some places we can't even pronounce. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So that's yeah, I, and that's I still crazy. can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's crazy that you go into the place. Um, when you when you when you're traveling to these places and you know you're in the gym and you're sparring, you're doing all this. What is the relationship with you like? You know, what is your relationship like with you and your your father? What's that like? Uh, my relationship with my dad is, is, is a good relationship. Uh, you know, we just. You know, it's a typical father and son relationship. Um, I know what I know what I gotta get done, and he know what I what I gotta get done. I just gotta do it, put the work in, 
you know, it's just that, you know, at this stage, it's not, it's not more so like, uh, I'm doing anything wrong. It's just more so like, um, I did this because of this, you know, like I said, I've been boxing for a long time. I've been boxing, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's like, it's like trying to say, let's say like one of your parents brought you into content creating, but you was the one content creating the whole time. You know, they can't yes. really, they can't really like, you know, they got to ask, not that much so go off of your knowledge, but if you're the one doing the hands on, yeah. your point of view and your knowledge and your toolbox is going to be way bigger than theirs. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's not, it's not a, they, they more so ask, right, so why you did it? And then it's like, oh, okay, I see it now. Or it's not, it's not more so like, do you want to run? It's like, how you feel today? Are right, you think you could run today? All right, yeah, cool. So it's like, well, you know, it's, it's a typical relationship. But with boxing, it's always different because I'm the one doing it hands on and I'm the fighter. So, you know, things got to kind of go off me because he don't know how I feel or, you know, like little things like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I only ask that question because, you know, we always see these uh, father son's relationship in boxing and we've seen it go sour um for whatever reason you know i don't know if it's the money or you stop seeing eye to eye or sometimes the father still wants to treat the father or treats the son like he's a a child but every time you know from the first time i talked to your father up until now is that he always wanted the best and he always speaks highly of you and he's always right. saying yo you know he's he's gonna he's gonna take over he's gonna be the best and all that because you know right. sometimes these relationships with father and son could get like you said, it can get rocky, you know, like, listen, you know, I know you pops. I know you, you know, you might be my manager or you my trainer, whatever you are, but I got to do this. This is, you know, I, I got to be in this gym four or five hours. I got to go through this. I got to go through that. So, you know, right. just let me, let me do what I do. You know, you still pops and that's never going to, uh, it's that's never going to change. And that's the good thing about it. Because like I said, we've seen what father and son relationships have turned into. And you yeah, know, it's, you know, it's, it's, but me and my dad relationship is a little different, you know. Um, I feel as though like me and my dad was that ever get into, to a disagreement or anything about that. It is just something be like, you agree with it? If you don't agree with it, then I'm not even gonna box. You get what I'm trying to say? It's like, uh, if you don't yeah. agree with it, then I'm not gonna box. Cool. But if you agree with it, just keep going. What's the next fight? You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, you know, I'm not one of those type kids where you know they're. Like, you know, throw their dad under the under the buses for some money. Or, you know, it's like, I've been around the, the top fighters, top managers. There is in boxing. So it's like, you know, it's nothing that somebody can show me that I haven't seen already. Or like, just be like, wow. Like, nah. When you, when you and your father have some time and you're not in the gym and there's no boxing, you're in the house like you are now. Um... Do y'all ever talk about, you know, when you get ready to turn pro and what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to sign with anybody? Do you want to go independent? Like, do y'all ever have those conversations or it's just no boxing talk in the house? No, no, no. It'd be, it'd be, but I mean, not, not more so in the house, but, you know, it'd be boxing talk. You understand what I'm saying? Because uh, we got to be on the same page as, at the end of the day. You know, he want what's best for me. I'm the fighter. So, you know, he can't want what's best for him. He has to want what's best for me. And, you know, I have to agree with it because I'm the fighter at the end of the day. And, um, nah, but, um, you know, with the promotional company and boxing and all that, you know, we got everything mapped out already. We, we kind of got a plan on how things you know, how we would want things to go, obviously, you know, opportunity may arise and it's like, you know, we got to think on the fly, like, wait, maybe this opportunity might be better, maybe what's better, the next best moves for us. So, you know, it's, it, it, that's just how it is. You know, we can't control some of the things, but, um, yeah, yeah, we, we, we definitely, we've been talking to a couple of managers already and, you know, like I said, this is the year for me to turn pro, so. You know that we definitely on the right track, and you know, stay just stay patient, keep following my journey. You guys will see, like everything is, is worth it. Trust me. 
the decision of turning pro did um did that i mean did it have anything to do with you know what it's time for me to make this money or you know um or was it just you know what i'm just i'm i don't want to be i don't want to be in the amateurs no more i appreciated all nah. my accomplishments it's time for me to move on to the next level no 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 but we haven't turned pro yet just to clarify but it's just yeah. more so like 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 now like you know when you fighting in the amateurs it's like like for example my last fight you know, I had some people came out to see me, like some some fighters that they heard that I was fighting that oh y'all yeah, wanna go see him fight. But really the people that came out to see me was really like my godmoms and my mom. You get what I'm saying? Everybody else they heard I was fighting was like, oh right, let me go out there and check a uh, keep out or whatever. But it's just like when I was, when, when it was time for me to fight, it's like everybody, you know, clapping and yelling is like that don't happen with every fighter, you know. Like he clearly draws attention, and you know, he's a star. You get what I'm trying to say? Like he, yeah. I don't yeah. know how to explain. You gotta really be there to, to, to see what I'm trying to say. But well, um, you are what you are, um, yeah, because I've seen some people that went to some of your fights out there, and you know, people go, "Oh man, a lot of people were coming to see him," and a lot of people don't even know about him. Some of the people who are not really boxing fans. Or who just might have came out there and wanted to see how it was was like, yo, yeah, we here to see Keith, and I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Like, how yeah. you just here? How do you know him? And it's like I found out, and you know, and we have to thank social media for that too, definitely, because definitely. It's like a big role in that because, uh, and that's why it's always so important that when you guys fight, that I post y'all in my storyline, um, in my Facebook group. Because when I put that up there, a lot of people are like, for the people who don't know, like the, my brother Tom is the one you did the chop up with. And he was like, I never heard of him because a lot of them don't watch amateur boxing. They know, might know about it, but it's always my job to put people on with certain fighters. And when I did that, uh, he hit me back and he was like, yo, that kid is dope. We got to have him back on the show again. I said, yeah, well, you know, just let me know. And I'll talk to his pops because he is a very busy man because I know you're constantly in the gym. And this is how I know you're busy because you don't have time to go live. Like, I can't say that I always yeah. see you go live. You be super busy. And I know you're in the no, gym working. Um, it, it's, it's just like, for me, for me, boxing is in my life. You know, it's, a, it's, it's a part of it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So... Like for people that that they, you can't let nothing in this world con consume you fully. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like you gotta think about it. I I be in the gym hours throughout the day. Sometimes training twice, three times a day. I'm also in school. You know, I also gotta study, prepare for tests, prepare prepare for this. And I'm also 21 years old. You get what I'm trying to say? So on my free time, I'm like I don't really care about going live, you know, like, or social media, like, nah, I want to, you know, go out something, you know, you feel what I'm trying to say? So, for the most part, anything you see me doing on social media, if it's not about boxing, it's just like my regular lifestyle, what I do on a daily, or, you know, me just enjoying the little free time that I got. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could, I could, I could dig that because um, as great as social media it is, it could be evil too. Yeah, um, because a lot of these guys, they're on social media. They're talking about how bad they are, what they could do with this, and then next, you know, you're getting into it with somebody else that's trying to challenge you. Like, yeah, well, yo, pull up to the gym, now. You pull up. Will you drop your location? I'm like, no, I ain't got time for none of yeah, that, bro. Like, that's, that's the thing. Is like you gotta understand. Sometimes, like boxing is not the only thing that I do, or that's not the only thing that I can do. You understand what I'm saying? But other people. Boxing is the only thing, like, that's the only thing that they got going for themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I have a clothing brand. Um, I was supposed to be, like, in a little movie. You understand what I'm saying? So it's, like, it's many different things that I that I can do and that I do do, do throughout the day. So it's just, like, me. Yeah, you don't have time. You don't have, you don't have time for one. Yeah. yeah, no, it's just, like, for me, I'm even talking about boxing. So I'll be handicapping myself. It's simple. Yeah, like, but you like me. Even though I'm a content creator, boxing is not the only thing I got going on. And boxing is not the only thing 
you're going to hear when you come to the show. I went from yeah. talking about mm-hmm. to all types of stuff, people, you know, homeless. I talk about a lot of stuff. So when a lot of people come on here, if I'm having a conversation about that, they're just disrupted and bringing boxing. I'm like, that's all you got going on? Yeah. You just talking about, about boxing. You just talking about boxing. It just puts you in a which just puts you in a small category. But if you talk about all sports, so like, you know, breaking yeah. news, daily news, then that'll, that'll you know, open your, your audience up more. So for me, just to talk about one thing or just be about one thing, I put myself in a little small category. Exactly. When I started that, when I started this and I said I was doing this for amateurs, a lot of people was just like, oh, well, I don't know how that's going to work for you, but let's let's see how that works and i'm like it's gonna work fine because mm-hmm. why y'all here arguing about all these fighters that's established already what about the amateurs right. what about you know what i'm saying you guys rather argue about pro fighters that's millionaires or even making a way to be millionaires but i'm like what about somebody like keith right. um what's somebody like drippy cherish Right. Who's super dope? I I love that girl. She's super dope, and I'm like, well, what about them? Y'all just right. ignoring them to argue about people that's established already. So I'm like, you know what? I don't get into those arguments and all that. But you have to step outside the box. If you just had boxing going on, I mean, and it would be cool. But if you just had that going on, like you said, you'll be in this box. But it's like you have other things going on besides boxing. Like you're doing some things that guys in their thirties are not even doing. Yeah, you got a lot going on, and you know what I'm saying. And then what's so crazy is that the older you get, and the more you go, you get deep into your career. I mean, you ne- you just never know what's gonna happen. So you know you're on the right path, but I think that's also because you correct me if I'm wrong. You have the right team. You have the right people around you. Right, right. You understand because you know, the you thing know, you know, that was just a one man army, you know. Yeah, like, everybody that's around me, you know, not only do they are they a part of my team, but I feed off of them as well. You know, I could go to them and just take notes and just see what they do. Everybody that's around me, or that's on my team, they they older than me. You understand what I'm saying? And I could go to them for advice. You know, like what you think about this? They tell me try it, just try it. You know, yeah. so like having them around me makes me better. Look, speaking of the speaking of the devil, look at her. She just dropped in too. Oh, Drippy. What's up, Drip? Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's dope to have around, you know what I'm saying? These type of uh, platforms because, you know, um, we get to help each other. I always tell people, even as content creators, you know, we get the y'all get to help us, you know, so you get to see what we're about, but then also people get to know who you guys are. You know what I mean, and that, and that's you know that's just super dope. It's always important to do that. But um, I'm 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 gonna try this uh, this week. I gotta because once pops told me that you was fighting, and I was just like, oh god, I gotta get out there. I gotta you get know, out. It's there. not just me fighting though. We got like this three yeah, people got- from my gym fighting. Oh yeah. So, so we, yeah, we fight back to back. So it's like I'm one day two, three, four, and five. You get what I'm saying? It's like it's like Yo, a whole lot of busy. Yeah, busy man. We just we had three fighters uh fighting yesterday. All three of us won, and we got another kid that he's not from our gym, but like we close with him, we spar with him all the time, and he also fighting too. You know, but it's yeah. it's gonna be a nice night like, night of boxing. Yeah. Um. How did that feel? You know, just to have all y'all winning one night. You know, the the last the last fight. I mean, how did that feel? You know. Y'all coming from the same circle. I mean, you know, we put the work in, so it's like, you know, it's just, you know, that's just how it, you know, that's just, it's, it's very rare that, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. When we go to the gyms and we spar, it's like that. We go there, you know, and we just, like, not just sound cocky, you know, but we dominate. We go to this place, we dominate. Um, it's always competitive. You know, even, even if we don't win, we have a comp- it's competitive. We're never the ones being dominated. It's always either close or we get the upper hand. So 
you know, I'm not going to say it's like, oh, wow, we did it. We've been doing this for a minute now. You know, it's what it, it's what expect, it's what it is expected of us to do because we put the work in, we train hard, um, you know, and, and if one of us doesn't want it, it's like, you slack. So that's just how it is. So if one of us wasn't the win, it's like that person was not on your level. You should have lost that fight or it should have been as close. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just that's how it is. If you when you're at a fight and you see one of your you know, one of your stable mates fighting, uh you ever get hype at the fight, you know how you know you're yelling out instructions, yo, do this, do that. Cause you look like the type yeah. that'll do that. Like you ever yell at them? Not yell at them, just more like, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, be the, be the voice that they need so they can win. You know what I'm saying? So, you got, you got to stay, you got my pops in their corner, and then me, I'm, I'm yelling like, yelling like certain instructions, just hoping that they listen, or just to encourage them to keep going, or focus on this, or, you know, do, do something that I see, you know, but, um. You know, I'm I'm always like when anybody fight, I'm I'm there. You get what I'm saying? It's like if if I'm in the building, you gonna hear me, especially one of my guys fighting or sparring. I I mean I think you play a major role in your gym, and um, I'm sure you you're not the youngest in the gym, but you're sure not the oldest. But I I just feel like you play a role, and maybe it's just me going off my feelings, but. I feel like a lot of people look up to you. Old, uh, probably. You know, I don't. You know, it's. I don't. I don't. I don't look at it like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know, um, because you have. You, I mean, and and this is not to take anything from anybody else that's in this gym. This is not to take anything away from any other amateur out there. But you know, it's only a certain amount of fighters that have that gift, that special gift. They have what they call that it factor. Right. And it's just with you, you're just, you're just, you just you you're just something different and you're something special. You know what I mean? And everybody have that. You know, some people are born with it, and some people have to train hard to get it. You know what I mean? But um you're just you're just something cut from a different cloth. And like I said, um we had, you know, Corey Stevenson, who's out of Newark, and then I'm like, okay, now who's going to come after him? And now we're looking at you, and we're like, you know what? He's going to be the next one, not so much the next Shakur, but the next one right, out of right. – like, have you ever had anybody say that to you, or that's just something that you always hear all the time? Yeah, no, no, no. Many, I mean, especially, like, growing up, you know, a lot of people always, like, they stay, you know, they, they try to like compare us and it's not, but it's like, um, like people got to understand it's same, same way, same way with Shakur. It's like, if it was somebody before Shakur, he would want to, when he see that spot, he like, I, right, I want that to be me one day. You get what I'm trying to say? So when I, when I look at Shakur, it's like, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I want that to be me one day. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's like, I want to be that guy. So. I'm gonna try to be that guy and be better than him. You get what I'm saying? And that's that's what he will want. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody that's coming up after him, that that you know, watched him growing up, was there, at, you know, all the fights and, this and that. Like, of, that's that's what he would want. You get what I'm trying to say? So to be the next Shakur, that's not what he would want. That's not what I want. I want to be. The, I want to be the next face of Nook when he done. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like that is, yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. Because you know that 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 always happens um, in sports, especially in boxing. Um, one guy's from the same town as the other, and somebody might say, "Yeah, well, he's good." Nah, I don't think this kid is going to be that good. But the problem is, they they keep doing the comparing. You can't compare. It's like Shakur and Keith are two different people. Yeah, two different people, two, um, like, 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 like I said, it's, it's, um, in this boxing, I'm not, I'm not going to handicap myself. I'm using boxing to, you know, spread my wings in all directions, you know, not just in boxing, 
but in all aspects that make me make me a greater person or make my story greater. You know, with me, it's not just boxing. And same thing with Shakur. With Shakur, it's not just boxing. The, when he spread his wings and he opened his avenues up, it's going to be in different avenues that I can't touch. And when I do it, it's going to be in different avenues that he can't touch. And that's what's going to make us different. Understand what make us common is we from north and we box and we great at what we do. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just that's that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the that's the um that's the that's the great thing about it. And I'm sure you'll be proud of it, you know what I mean? Because it's all about keeping the door on the map. That's the most important part is to keep Newark on the map. You know, not, not just Jersey, but Newark, because, you know, you're still going to have some doubters out there. And it's like, well, you can keep doubting me. We're going to keep proving you wrong that exactly. you got smoke out here, too. No, nah, exactly. That's that's the same way with me. It's just like but people that's, that's coming up behind me is like, nah, that kid is doing stuff that I wasn't doing. At his age. That, that boy is nice. He's going to be the truth. It's, I'm not looking at no kid as competition or like nah but like come on now like, that's that's corny that's corny and i'm sure and, and and i told your pops too i have to come to the gym because i was telling him i said look well you know i love keith but i know there's some other hitters in that gym and he's like yo you gotta come you gotta come yeah. through it he don't be want to say too much you know say he just be like yo you gotta like I'm gonna definitely come through um, to see because I, I, you know, I always love to see the up and coming. So I, I definitely have to do my, you know, my, my my job and get out there as quick as I can. But let me let me let me ask let me ask you something, Keith. Um, and, and this is probably not even important. But if there were three things you wanted people to remember you, remember something about you as an amateur boxer, right? Not just as a fighter. What would be the three things you would want people to remember you as an amateur boxer? What would, what what are the three things you would want people to remember about you? Um, one, a person I was never afraid to take risks. I feel like my whole amateur career, I've been taking risks. You know, since you know, literally my first fight. You know, so so one, um, a person I wasn't afraid to take risks. To a person that um, really, you know, came up through the boxing, through the boxing system, and found his way. You know, it wasn't just simply, oh, he had talent and he was just good, or he was just, you know, surrounded by the people. No, like I actually started from zero and literally worked my way up. You get what I'm trying to say? I, like that's just how it was, literally. Um, so a person that wasn't afraid to take risks to a person that went from zero all the way up and um three just an entertaining fighter. I feel as though I feel as though um you know now a lot of people love to see me fight. Everybody wanna come see me fight and they can't wait till I turn professional so they can just see me fight and you know just see a show. So I feel like that's the top three things that my amateur career would be remembered for. Uh, let everybody know too this week what's going down this week. Let let the people who don't know what's going down. Okay, this week we got the finals of the Golden Gloves. Um, I'll be competing first bout in Bloomfield, uh, New Jersey, Bloomfield High School, I think it is. And um, you know we're gonna take the victory. It's gonna be an exciting fight. You know I know a lot of people gonna be there tuning in. Um, some people believe he gonna win. Some people believe I'm gonna win. You know, just come out and, and see for yourself. Oh man, they 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 think he might win. They think you might win. I mean, this this, this sounds like an amateur pay per view. I mean, is that what we seeing this week? I mean, that's what it was yesterday. So I feel as though this one is a little more anticipated. You know, he got his crowd. Um, you know, I don't really care if I got a crowd or not because like, I'm gonna just do what I do. You know, like. I, I, yeah. It's already set. I've been trying too hard. It's, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah, you don't care about um, like I said earlier in the conversation, you don't you don't care about crowds. That don't phase you because at the end of the day, 
They could be five people in there. You know what I mean? You still got a job to do. Oh, yeah, no, nah, for sure. It, I mean, I could be, but that's just me as a person. I could be the only person in the gym, and I'm going to work hard. You get what I'm trying to say? So it don't matter who's there watching me. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to give 100%, and I'm going to get the victim. Besides, besides you looking up to the fighters or liking the fighters where you're at, um, what's some of the fighters that you like to sit and watch, you know, when you get the time, when you're at home? I mean, who 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 catches your eyes right now? Um, I'm not going to lie, it's really, it's really the same, the same, um, like, just really, like, the top-level guys that you see now, you know, that's on TV. Terrence Crawford, um, you know, it, it, it really depends, you know, because I watch people based off of, you know, attributes. So if I'm in a fight or if I got a fight coming up or if I've been sparring and I'm like, dang, you know, every time a person do this, I, I want to see how I could, like, what's, what's more than one shot that I could get off, you know, every time a person do this. So I was just go in a little archive, do my little research, and I noticed like, oh, I, but he, you know, every time a person did this, he did this and this and this. But this person, every time she called for this person, every time he did this, this and this. So that just opened up my arsenal, you know, to have multiple things. So when I'm fighting in the ring, it's like, all right, I got six or seven different ways to, you know, go about this situation or this fighter when every time he does this, but. You know, it like I said, it varies. You got Shakur, Bud, Earl, uh, versus the Hitchens, Keyshawn Davis. Um, wow. Uh, it, it, it just goes on. We go old school fighters. You know, it, it really just depends. My Like I said, I feel like my arsenal is crazy. And that's the reason why, because I'm just a student of the game. So I watch everybody, all the greats. Yeah, that, that's a... Um... That's a lot. And I'm sure you probably get to the gym. You'd be like, you know what? I'm going to take all these dudes that I was watching. And I'm gonna, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to try. Yeah. I may not I'm gonna capitalize it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on it just to see how it go. But I know probably for sure when you get it down packed, now you're like, okay, my pony don't even know what's about to happen this week. <laughs> yeah, no, nah. that's that's just you know, that's how I feel. It's not it's not me being cocky, but it's just you know when you like. It's, it's another thing is when you when you in a ring with these great fighters, and you know that's just boosts your confidence to a whole another level because the person that I'm fighting is nowhere near the level of competition that I've been sparring or in a ring with. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like I said, I spark people bigger than me, heavier than me. Um, I've been in a ring with professionals. So it's like, you know, yeah. I'm supposed to, if, if, we, if we really talking, I'm supposed to show out, you know, because it's, it's, it's levels to this. And I, and I won't call it being cocky, but more or less being confident. See, when you speak the way you speak, people are, are gonna say yo it's it's cocky but it's not cocky it's being confident nah. because you got a lot of people in this sport that don't they, they're not even sure if they want to be a part of the sport some people are just doing it yeah. to be doing it and it's like bro like we said earlier that trying to play boxing that you hurt yeah and when you put the you know the, the amount of hours and all the stuff that you you know that that i put in it's, it's like it's not cocky but if I don't feel this way, then I should not be doing this. I'm putting too much time, too much effort to not be this confident in myself. You understand what I'm saying? So, well, you know, they they hated Floyd. They hated Floyd. You know what I'm saying? He's too cocky. He's always showing his money. He's showing jerk. But one thing Floyd could do, he, he could fight. Yeah, he could fight, for sure. He could fight, and he had a right. Rather we rather we liked him or not, he had the right to be. But I, I guarantee you this: every time when he fought, rather we was gonna pay to see him win or lose, you were gonna pay for him. You were gonna pay, and that could be the type of fighter. Now you might not be like Floyd, far as talking the nonsense or just talking how he was talking, but yeah. it might come. 
when you turn pro, and people might, yeah, I pay to see Keith whoop his ass, but then I pay to see somebody whoop Keith ass. But guess what? You're going to pay. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it's going to be. And that's cool. I don't care. Just come out and see it. <laughs> like this week. This week. I'm sure somebody yeah. is like, we got to handle that kid this week. Oh, We're yeah, going to yeah. handle him. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> then if it don't go down, now it's like, damn it. And, and, and mind you, once you walk away from amateurs, like you don't get another shot. Now you're gonna have to. You want a shot. Now you have to see me in the pros. But for right now, it's over. <laughs> it's yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I mean, that's, that's the dope thing about um, doing what you're doing, man. You got a bright future, though, Keith, man. And I always appreciate you taking the time to come through and rock with me because I know you're a busy sure. man. So you know, I told pops, I said, "Is he? Is he? Are you sure he's? You know what I mean? Because I don't." Know you got going on he's like man i'm gonna tell him to come up because i'm like i know you're a big man so i appreciate you uh coming up here and always rocking with me bro it's an honor of course, of course. we definitely got to do it again and i'm gonna definitely um make him up saturday uh even though there was a show out here i might have to push that to the side and uh just come on out that way i already got the direction to come out that way so I won't have an issue, uh, you know, getting out that way. But I'm gonna keep pops uh, posted to let him know what I'm gonna do, though. But I, I ain't gonna hold you too long, though, man. I'm gonna let you go ahead and go, man. Do your yes, thing. Sir. And uh, Saturday, you know, is it's on. But uh, tell the people who don't uh, where they can find you, though. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at official keep Cologne. Um, that's you know. Uh, I'm and, and on YouTube at Keep Cologne. I got a little episode documentary, not a documentary, but like a series episode of this week. My fight is gonna be uh, well, last week the fight that I just fought, um, this upcoming week, and then you know, another week after that. So if you if you can't make it to the fight or you can't see the fight, then just tune into the episodes and you get a little recap of the whole week. And it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. So at Official Keep Cologne on Instagram and Keep Cologne on YouTube. Oh, Keep, before you go, I got I just thought about this. So, you know, we got, I have to ask this. I wasn't going to ask, but I said, let me just ask him just to see where his head at. <laughs> we got Keith Thurman, Tim Zoo. Who you liking that? I mean, history repeats itself, you know. You got the old head walking out, the, the young buck coming in. So, you got to go with Tim. Tim, man. You know, it's, it's already written. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, Keith Thurman, he had his time. And, you know, I feel as though this is one of his last little, you know, big fights. And he, he's just hanging on right now. But I definitely got 10 winning. Yeah, they, they're out for, you know, this dude right here is stupid, man. My boy Josh is stupid. Yeah, all right. Well, definitely. Look. Um, we definitely have to do this again. Um, sure. Maybe in weeks we can get it. Maybe I can get to the gym and do it with you. But I, I'll keep in contact. As a matter of fact, you know, your father should have gave you my number, but uh, I'll I'll give it to you. You know, so you can have it already. But we definitely we have to do this again. Maybe in the next two or three weeks, we got to definitely link up. So uh, I'll right, keep it. In, I'll keep in contact with you. We'll definitely do this again. All right, my guy. Appreciate you. And good night, man. I like was. Thurman out. Respectfully. Yeah, you stupid. All right, y'all, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all so much, man. Thank y'all so much. I couldn't stay on here too long, man, because, you know, uh, I got to go. You know what I mean? I got the missus and got to get my grub on. Y'all know. I hope y'all appreciate that, man. I told y'all I was going to bring y'all the realists. You know what I mean? Um, shout outs to Keith. You know what I'm saying? Shouts to all the fighters, all my amateurs from from the East Coast to the West Coast to the Midwest to the Dirty South. You know I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. The truth, man. You know me. You know me, Josh, man. I love my, I love my amateurs, man. Shouts to them. Shouts to the coaches. Shouts to everybody, man. I got to get up out of here, y'all. Um, so respectfully, I'll be back here Wednesday. You know, I don't know. I'm working on my next fighter. Y'all see what I got going on Friday. Um, so Ethan Bands, uh, y'all can join me Friday. I'll be back. That's another amateur out of Philly. Uh, I believe I set that up for what 
four was it four p.m. I think I might have set it up for four p.m. Friday. So of course you already see that. Make sure y'all join me Friday, and uh, we're gonna try to get somebody on for Wednesday. But if even if we don't get nobody on for Wednesday, I'll still be back here. So y'all know me. Y'all know what it is. I love every single. Hold on. I love every single last one of y'all. Uh, if you're on your way home, get there safe. Uh, whatever you wherever you at, uh, please be safe. Be blessed. And let's watch over for watch over ourselves. All right. Y'all know what it is. It's the no Duck Zone Podcast. Let's go.